Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Healthcare Consumerism Radio. This is Brent Macy, Managing Director for the Institute for Healthcare Consumerism, joined by Jonathan Field, Editorial Director here at the Institute. And joining us on the program today is David Lindgren. He is the uh, Compliance Officer for Flexible Benefits Service Corporation. David, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Oh, you bet. Uh, to kind of give us uh, give us a little background on um, you know your company Flex, and and we'll get some more into kind of your topic, private exchanges for niche markets. Sure. Uh, well, we're uh, based out of uh, Rosemont, Illinois, just a, a suburb of Chicago. Uh, kind of three primary divisions. We uh, we are we're a third party benefits administrator for cafeteria plans, health reimbursement arrangements, and those types of accounts. Uh, we are also a benefits administrator at a wholesale level and work with a few thousand insurance agents throughout the country. And uh, for about the past two years, we've actually launched our own private insurance exchange. We refer to it as InsureX Solutions that has uh, more or less evolved into an exchange that uh, uh, specializes in niche markets. Mm-hmm. Now, is there kind of one of the things, and we all talk about private exchanges and 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 the statement is, if you've seen one exchange, you've seen one exchange. But is there such a thing as a, a traditional private exchange in your mind? Uh, I, you know, in terms of the, the capabilities and, and the different, different technological components, you know, the, the, there's probably not a lot of similarity. But when we take a look at the private exchanges that are out in the market, most seem to target – uh, specific segments. Uh, most of the private exchanges we're seeing are targeting larger employers, uh, targeting uh, the full-time employee population, uh, targeting uh, generally uh, group health-based plans, uh, oftentimes self-insured plans. We're not seeing a lot of private exchanges yet uh, that are really targeting you know, smaller businesses or the retiree market. Uh, or part-time employees, or exchanges that are using individual health plans, you know, outside of, of course, the the, the, the public health insurance marketplace. So, um, you know, really, you, you know, that's where we're we're defining the niche market is 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 really in the segments that that private exchanges are targeting. So, you, so you're kind of the the latter ones that you mentioned. That's the target for the, your Insurex um, platform is more these niche markets and and being able to offer something to an employee population that they're not going to be able to get from these other exchanges that are, are necessarily out there. Correct, correct. So ours would target, you know, smaller businesses, retirees, part-time employees, and, and the like. Now, when you look, um, you know, as the, the compliance officer there, you know, when you look at the compliance issue for these these niche markets, um, you know, what what are some of the compliance issues that you see? Sure. Well, we, you know, we've seen, uh, you know, in particular in the small business segment, you know, year after year, small businesses are struggling to to find affordable coverage for their employees. And, uh, you know, depending on, on the marketplace you're in, you know, usually it's only about 30 to 40 percent of small employers are offering, you know, a group benefit health insurance package to their employees. Mm-hmm. And we've seen a lot of them looking towards the individual marketplace. Mm-hmm. Uh, the problem with the individual marketplace is based on some some guidance that was issued by the IRS and the Department of Labor and the Department of Health and Human Services. It generally is prohibiting uh, these small businesses from giving pre-tax dollars to to their employees. So if a small business were going to to look into uh, you know the the opportunity of transitioning their employees to the individual market, you generally have to do that with after-tax dollars. And then we also have the, the ERISA component that we have to be concerned with. Uh, if, if an employer is giving funds for the sole purpose of purchasing health insurance coverage, that means that that individual market coverage would generally be subject to group market regulations such as COBRA, Medicare secondary payer rules, and others that individual plans just can't satisfy. So, so generally when you're shifting to after-tax dollars, you got to let those employees use those funds, uh, you know, really at their own discretion for insurance coverage or for other reasons. And so, you know, there are some, some drawbacks to that model, but there's also drawbacks to the traditional group model that really is becoming unaffordable for several small businesses. Now, when you look, um, you had mentioned these niche markets. So kind of elaborate on 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 some of these niche markets that you guys um, either do business with or are looking to to uh, target from a prospect standpoint? Sure. So, you know, the retiree market's been a big opportunity, you know, for ourselves and similar agencies alike. Uh, we've seen, 
you know, really started in the automobile industry, uh, you know, with, you know, Fortune 500 companies transitioning outside of traditional group retiree coverage to a retiree health reimbursement arrangement that just uh, gives uh, that retiree and possibly their spouse a lump sum of dollars, and this still can be done on a pre-tax basis, but gives that, uh, that employee and their spouse, or I'm sorry, that retiree and their spouse uh, you know, let's just say, you know, $3,000 per year, and then and then those employees can access those funds to either reimburse out-of-pocket medical expenses mm-hmm. or pay for things like a Medicare supplement plan, a Medicare Part D plan, a Medicare Advantage plan, possibly dental or vision coverage. And, uh, and that's a marketplace that uses individual-based policies for those retirees and their spouses, and that's a marketplace that we're helping uh, transition to that platform if it makes sense for that particular employer. Now, as the um, you know, as the compliance officer there, when when you're working with your your broker partners that you have and built throughout the years, and then also working with the employer clients, what is you know what's the discussion around the compliance issue? Are they aware that there's certain regulations that that they have to adhere to, um, or is it is it your job there as the solution provider to come in and and make them aware of all the compliance issues um, that are right for that employee population and the product? Yeah, so I mean, I mean, generally, you know, the solution that we would recommend would would vary by employer mm-hmm. uh, or, or unique situation. And, uh, and any compliance issue that may exist, we try to make recommendations to, you know, get around or overcome those compliance issues. But ultimately, uh, there is a discussion that's had. Uh, there are some written materials that are provided that, uh, that spell out what the compliance concerns are. And, and our goal is not to implement a plan that is, not, that is non-compliant. Our goal is to, to help, help these, these employers transition to a private exchange model that is compliant and that is beneficial to both the employer and the employee from a cost savings perspective. Okay, and, you, and you've touched on it here as well, but, but can a small business, you know, really help employees pay for individual market coverage? Now, that was something that you had defined here earlier. It, that's an IRS regulation that they wrote, correct? Uh, on right, the so, that- so really there's been three sets of guidance that have come out, one in January 2013, uh, I would say, say probably the more significant guidance came out in September of last year, and they, and they issued uh, uh, some frequently asked, asked questions information this past May. Uh, but generally speaking, uh, they refer to an employer that gives uh, an employee money for the purchase of individual market coverage. They refer to that in the regulations as an employer payment plan. And uh, they specifically state if that's done on a pre-tax basis, it's going to violate uh, certain uh, Affordable Care Act market reforms, such as the requirements to provide coverage for essential health benefits with unlimited annual and lifetime maximums, as well as the requirement to cover preventive care at 100%. And by definition, these employer payment plans, you know, uh, for lack of better terms, you know, usually called health, re- health reimbursement arrangements or HRAs, uh, generally by definition have a cap on that annual limit and generally uh, would not cover preventive care at 100 percent. So, so the, the big concern is, is you, you know, where, where an employer could provide pre-tax dollars to employees for traditional group coverage, uh, they generally need to be doing so with after-tax dollars if they're going to be helping these employees purchase coverage in the individual market. And, of course, you know, that means there's payroll taxes that have to be absorbed by the employer on those contributions, there's income taxes that apply to the uh, employee along with those payroll taxes. And then, of course, you know, for employees that are eligible for subsidies in the exchange, you know, ultimately their modified adjusted gross income is what determines their eligibility and the amount of their subsidy. And when you're increasing their taxable income, that can have an impact on, on what or if they receive a subsidy. And so... You know, there's you know, while we would love for for these small businesses to be able to do this on a pre-tax basis, uh, generally speaking, the the IRS regulations and the supporting agency guidelines tell these small businesses that if they do it, they could be subject to an excise tax of a hundred dollars per applicable employee mm-hmm. per day, which is thirty six thousand five hundred dollars per employee per year, which you know can put a small business right. That's a salary. out of business. So. 
you know, if they're going to do this, they have to understand it is taxable income and what the ramifications of that taxable income is. Uh, is it a perfect solution? Probably not, but the current situation for many of these businesses offering these traditional group plans, uh, seeing these renewal increases year after year, has put them in, a, in, in really a tough spot where, where this seems to be a, a, a much simpler approach, and it does give those, those employees the ability to enroll in coverage from any individual market carrier uh, that, that's available where they live, can purchase and you know, enroll in any plan that, that meets uh, their, their, their budget. You know, it could be an HMO, a PPO, an HSA. So it really does sort of give them an exchange-like experience because they have uh, you know, virtually a limitless number of plans to choose from. Again, the drawback being we're using taxable dollars. David, we really appreciate you having you on the, the program today. Kind of let our audience know where they can find you guys. Sure. If you want to take a look at our, uh, our exchange, it's insurexsolutions.com. Uh, we also have another domain, shopgetcovered.com, uh, and we'd love to have you, you take a look at our site. And if there's any interest, uh, give us a call or an email, and we'll be glad to answer any questions we can. All right, David. Thanks so much for uh, joining us on the program. Have a, have a great weekend up there in Chicago. And to the rest of our audience, again, if you want access to uh, discounted rates on privatehealthcareexchanges.com, type in all caps IHC radio for that discount. And we will see you next Friday on Healthcare Consumerism Radio.